Greetings from Managed Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship. So, welcome to 71st webinar series as a part of a Saturday webinar. Urban farming, uh, the opportunities for agri startup in the urban farming. The, what are the role of startups? So, in giving a new perspective to the urban farming. So, some of them are into the vertical farming, hydrophonics, aquaphonics also. But, however, we are going to restrict our discussion today urban farming. We are here with us, uh, two founders today with us. Uh, Mr. Pratik Tiwari, founder and CEO of Living Green Organics Private Limited. Pratik Tiwari, sir, comes with a uh, host of experience from uh, working in corporate giants, uh, including uh, Bharati Walmart, Reliance, and IDC. Uh, after that, he started his, his own uh, venture. He is into this living green organs for the past 10 years, where he is realizing the dream of urban farming. So, uh, communities. Sir, uh, can you hear us? Yes, sir. Good yes, morning, sir. sir. Yes, thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. We uh, welcome you. Thank uh, you. We'll be starting with you, sir. Please, you have 10 minutes. We have one hour time. We have a format of 20 plus 20 plus 20. Uh, each and every speaker will be getting 20 minutes, followed by last 20 minutes uh, reserved for a question and answer session, which is moderated as well as open to the uh, audience. Okay. Uh, we'll be starting with Mr. Pratik Tiwari, sir. Sir, please, sir. Uh... Raju, sir, kindly allow me to share the screen. Yes, sir. You can share it, sir. We have given presenter mode already. Okay. Uh, Raju, sir, kindly confirm that you can see my screen. All good, sir. We can see the screen. It is full screen. All crystal clear. Your voice also good. Please carry on. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Namaskar everybody. My name is Pratik Tiwari. I'm the founder and CEO of Living Greens. Um, when, when I resigned from Walmart uh, in the year 2013, um, I just had one simple dream in my head that one day all, uh, all the rooftops which are lying barren and vacant, one day all of them will have less green organic farms on them. Uh, it has been a nine year journey. Uh, it, it has been a very exciting journey and uh, I would like to take this opportunity to share some insights into this domain of urban organic farming. Uh, another interesting thing that I would like to share with you is that when I started uh, this venture, uh, farming only meant uh, rural farming, uh, but it has been a stubbornness and, uh, and the, and the uh, company and the support of fellow entrepreneurs like home crop and other similar ventures because of the collective effort of all such entrepreneurs today um, urban farming has finally got established as a separate domain to the extent that even the government of india at, at a union uh, government level at a state level, and even at a city government level everybody is recognizing uh, urban farming as uh, the new domain of farming. Um, so let's just first understand um, uh, why people want to grow vegetables at home. Um, so there has been a drastic change in the urban farming uh, domain uh, uh, after the pandemic or in fact during the pandemic. Uh, it is during the pandemic that some of these reasons have become concretized and some of these reasons have become so strong that they have led to the purchase decision of many people. So in, in very simple words, what it means is that the pandemic has fueled the growth of this, uh, the urban farming domain. Now, why do people want to grow vegetables at home? Some very interesting reasons here. Of course, people want to eat healthy and fresh. Uh, people also want to become food self-sustainable. So particularly during the pandemic and during the lockdowns, a lot of people were, almost all of us were constrained to our houses. And uh, and as people were forced to spend their time inside the four walls of their houses, uh, they realized that the rooftop is one open space where they can do some exercise or yoga in the morning and, and breathing exercise. But they also realized that uh, that entire rooftop space could also be used to grow vegetables such that they can, be, they can become at least partially food self-sustainable. Now, food self-sustainability, this concept uh, became stronger and stronger 
as the pandemic uh, forced uh, more and more people to stay inside the homes. Now, the other aspect is that um, another interesting thing that happened to us during the pandemic is that we started receiving uh, calls and and uh, mails from young people who are living in in uh, foreign countries, but their senior citizen parents are staying in inside uh, India. And what these people were saying was that uh, my parents are suffering from depression because their their social activity has been completely curtailed, and because of that depression. Uh, their immunity has gone down and they are falling prey to this disease. So these young people were actually paying us money from their overseas account so that we could send our portable farming systems to their uh, their parents' houses and, uh, and, and they could start growing organic vegetables on their rooftop. So uh, it's actually a fun exercise for elders and a lot of elders are now interested in investing in this uh, in, in rooftop farming. Then the other thing is that um, uh, we have realized that the, the on-screen time, uh, the online screen time of our children has increased drastically. And initially that was not really a concern, but, but once again during the pandemic and due to the online uh, classrooms and online education, uh, children are now absolutely stuck to the screens. And most people are now, most parents are now frantically looking at methods of connecting their children to back to nature. So that's also a very strong reason why people want to now utilize their rooftop for uh, growing organic vegetables. And then um, uh, the stress built up has been uh, exponential uh, during the past two years. People have been losing their jobs, even if they've been able to hold on to their jobs. Uh, the amount of workload that has come on them has actually doubled or quadrupled. So there's tremendous amount of working stress in the professional sector. And a lot of young people are now looking for, for example, there was this concept called staycations. So rather than going on a staycation, most, most young people said, why not develop our own farm on the rooftop? So it's, it's an excellent stress busting exercise. So more and more people are now willing to invest in, in urban farming. And it's not that people have not tried to grow uh, vegetables uh, in their houses, but uh, over the past nine years, we have come across this common set of problems that are being faced by all the urban growers. Uh, the first thing is related to containers. So most people are using containers which have got a leaking bottom. And even if they are using grow bags, then the problem with grow bags is that either they have a leaking bottom because they have got a stitching at the bottom, or even if they are sealed at the bottom, then the problem is that there is water logging happening inside the grow bags. And then there's a problem of not able to do sufficient hoeing and not able to provide sufficient uh, aeration to the roots of the vegetable plants that are being grown in the grow bags. Then another very dangerous thing that we have come across is that people are using soil on their rooftop. Now, uh, uh, that, that is really not a very good idea because the rooftop is not a load bearing structure. And the permissible weight on the rooftop, the permissible uniformly distributed uh, load that is permissible on the rooftop is uh, 20 kgs per square feet. And when you are using uh, soil, then you are um, then then you are crossing that permissible limit uh, very very uh, dangerously. So it's not a good idea to spread soil on the rooftop and and grow and try and grow vegetables. Then the other thing is that there is no knowledge support available to most of the people living in the cities. They are, they are mainly dependent on their gardeners. And the gardeners have absolutely no idea how to organically control pests and diseases or for that matter, how to organically manage the nutrients required by the vegetable plants. Then some people who had kitchen garden, they tried to grow vegetables in the kitchen garden. But once again, the problem was lack of knowledge and they ended up uh, having a very, very high plant density because of which the plants grew, but there was no output received from those plants. So once again, it was very demotivating for all those people. Then there is a problem. The common thing that we hear from people is that I don't have any time. Now, this is related to this very wrong notion that farming requires uh, long duration. Farming requires a lot of investment of time. Farming requires an, a lot of investment of energy. Well, uh, uh, that is absolutely not true. And that is where Living Greens uh, as a venture has focused upon to, uh, to take out the sting out of the concept of farming. 
to make farming a pleasurable activity to make farming a very simple activity to make farming uh, a non time intensive activity a non energy intensive activity so that everybody would like to grow their vegetable and do some urban farming on their rooftops now another problem is that most people do not know uh, what to grow and when to grow so that lack of knowledge is also a problem then availability of good quality uh, planting material uh, whether it is sampling uh, saplings or seeds that's also a problem and then the other thing is that there are very few companies uh, which are able to offer uh, professional support services and who have sufficient accumulated practical knowledge to be able to offer uh, support services uh so as a venture uh, we decided to address all these problems by creating an urban farming pack so our urban farming pack consists of four parts we have created a portable farming system as the name suggests it is portable in nature and in fact we we worked on the design of the system in such a way that during the pandemic we were able to ship these systems to any corner of the country uh in uh, in pieces so the whole uh system goes in pieces and it can be received and reassembled by the customer himself or herself just by referring to a self installation video so that means that during the pandemic a lot of people who wanted to start uh, urban farming they placed orders for these systems and we were able to ship these systems very easily from our warehouse to almost every corner of the country that is the reason why today we have over 1500 customers in 25 cities so the portable so i'll be talking a little more about the portable farming system in, in detail but what it really means is that here is a small little portable farm which is filled with a soilless organic medium it has a leak proof container it has its own drip system and subsurface drainage system and the yield that can be achieved from the portable farming system is uh, about 3 times as compared to land farming uh then uh, we also realize that it's not just about growing the plants the moment you start growing vegetable plants they are attacked by pests and diseases so over over the past 9 years we have been able to put a lot of research and we have finally been able to create an organic input kit which uh, which uh, is able to organically control 90% of pests and diseases and also uh, and and it basically contains three parts folio sprays root fertilizers and uh, bio fertilizers for mid season and end season application now we also realize that even if a person is able to use the portable farming system to grow the plants and let's say organically control the pests and diseases using the organic input kit there is still that that a uh, huge amount of apprehension in the hearts of hearts and minds of people that they they really don't know farming so a lot of people would get in touch with us and say can you please give us some training and we realize that there is no such thing as training in agriculture if we if we give them training on how to grow broccoli on the rooftop then when the then when the summer season comes then that training becomes redundant and we realize that the best way to learn is actually doing so we set up this plant doctor program which is basically an online support system uh in which we create a whatsapp group in which a highly experienced organic expert from our from our central team he offers daily online guidance to each of our customers and the most important thing is that the support is offered in real time so the support is not just restricted to pest and disease identification uh, the organic expert proactively shares interculture videos and sewing charts now and so basically the model that we are following here is is quite like telemedicine but with one big difference Uh, in case of uh, telemedicine the the doctor identifies the problem he diagnoses the problem and then he uh, prescribes the medicine and then the person has to go to the market and get the medicine in our case the doctor is prescribing the medicine but the medicine has already traveled on day 1 to the customer's house in the form of the organic input kit so which which also means in simple terms that whatever our organic expert is prescribing or recommending to the customer he does not have to go out of his house to buy any of the organic inputs everything is available in that organic input kit and now we are actively looking for uh, for uh, entrepreneurs who can become a city business partner so that we can offer on ground maintenance services uh in multiple cities we are already offering on ground maintenance services in 
in some cities in Bihar, in the national capital region of Delhi, and in the in cities of Rajasthan, including Jaipur. But uh, we we are now actively uh, creating city business partners who would then be able to offer on ground services to our customers in multiple cities. So uh, a few pictures about the portable farming system. Uh, as I told you, um, it has the soilless organic medium subsurface drainage system. Now, the important thing is that the container that we are using, unlike the containers that are that are available on the internet, this container is different in uh, in the sense that it is completely leak proof. Now, the containers that are available on the internet, they either have heat seal joints or uh, they have got stitching on their joints. But the containers that we have designed they don't have any heat seal joint or any stitching. That means they can continue to be leak proof at least for three to four years. And then we offer drip system along with the motor and the green net. The green net is not a permanent feature. It is applied or removed on the basis of the guidance that is being offered by the, uh, by the organic expert. So these are uh, called portable farming system. They're very modular. And uh, uh, each portable farming system is taking a floor area of 40 square feet. And uh, you can, and the customer can put as many portable farming system as he wants. And these are completely plug and play. So as I said, he can receive all the components, uh, uh, reassemble everything uh, by himself or herself, and start growing vegetables from day one itself. So these are some more, some more uh, photographs. And uh, and by the way, as the name suggests, it's called a portable farming system. It doesn't mean that it is restricted to be used only on the rooftop. Uh, if you have a driveway, uh, you can put the portable farming system there. Any, It can be put anywhere on the ground. If you have a kitchen garden and you don't want to dig up your kitchen garden to grow vegetables, well, you can simply put a plug and play system, which is the portable farming system. And now more and more people are utilizing, are using these portable farming system to commercially grow organic vegetables in the heart of the city. Because uh, the, the winning proposition that they are seeing is that they don't have to invest in setting up a cold chain for, for the uh, fresh uh, vegetables. What it means is that they are doing farming where the consumption is happening. So the producer and the consumer are right next to each other, thus creating the world's shortest uh, supply chain for vegetables. So multiple uh, 30, 40, 80 uh, such units are being uh, put. Now, um, in order to protect the vegetables, uh, wherever there are mon monkey problems or problems of large birds or rodents like squirrels and rats, we have created these anti-monkey flames. And these are being successfully used for the past five years, all the way from Chennai to Haridwar, Chennai in the south to Haridwar in the north, and in Kolkata in the, in the east to Rajasthan in the west. Now, just in case if the rooftop has got fissures on its surface, so uh, before we install the portable farming system, we put these drain cell mats and then the portable farming system are, are put on top of these drain cell mats. So I talked about the organic input kit. It basically consists, consists of these four parts, organic foliar sprays, where we have biocontrol agents, basic formulations, and even natural growth promoters. Then we have organic root applications where we have biofungicide, bionematicide, biotomiticide, uh, and also some more Vedic formulations. Uh, so when I say Vedic formulation, these are basically like Jiva Amritam, uh, Ghana Jiva Amritam, uh, and then on sprays, we have Panchagavya. So these are already pre-prepared and sent as a part of this kit. Then we also offer traps, basically yellow sticky trap and pheromone trap along with the lure. And in order to uh, recharge the nutrients in the at the mid-season stage and at the end-season stage, we also offer two kinds of biofertilizers. All this comes as a part of one single kit. Then, uh, as I talked about the online support system, I'll quickly show you some of the charts that we share with our customers. So just to make sure that the plant to plant distance and the road to road distance is maintained, we have uh, created these schematic diagrams for different kind of vegetables. So on the left hand side is the diagram for, uh, is the sowing diagram for uh, cucurbits. And on the right hand side is the sowing diagram for leafy vegetables. Then we have also created this, uh, uh, these uh, charts. Uh, you can see three colors in it. So basically the brown color is showing the seed sowing stage. The fluorescent green color is showing the sapling transplanting stage. And the dark green color is showing the total harvest uh, duration 
of each crop. So this is for the summer and rainy season, and then similarly we have created for the winter season. Uh, I just love to show this picture because a lot of people ask me whether vegetables can grow in a soilless medium on a rooftop. This answers this this picture answers all those questions very very effectively. Uh, we also create uh, fruit growing systems. Now, unlike a cylindrical grow bag that you get on the internet, uh, uh, the, the main problem that we have faced in that cylindrical grow bag is that once the fruit plant starts growing, then the center of gravity shifts upwards. And whenever there are strong winds on the rooftop, then the whole plant or the whole fruit tree topples. And, and as many times it topples, its uh, root system gets uh, damaged. So now we have created a fruit growing system which is cubical in cross section and has got an external metallic frame which ensures that even if the plant has grown up to 12 to 13 feet high still it will never topple so it's a much more it's a much more stable method of growing fruits on the rooftop and we have been successfully able to grow fruits like papaya moringa lemon custard apple guava and then some of our clients in Bihar have also grown very successfully. They have grown banana, dragon fruit, fig, and even pomegranates. So we are not just talking about growing vegetables on the rooftop. We are also talking about growing organic fruits on the rooftop. Then for those people who are living in, balcony, in uh, flats, because their balcony space is extremely constrained, we have created this vertical vegetable gardening system. This is not a hydroponic system. Now, the beautiful thing about this system is that um, within a space of only five feet by two feet, that means five feet long and just two feet wide, you can grow 54 uh, organic uh, vegetable plants. So you can grow leafy vegetables, you can grow even larger vegetables. For example, as I'm speaking right now in my office, we are vertically growing things like cauliflower, cabbage, tomato, and even brinjal and chili. So this is a vertical vegetable gardening system and it is customizable. So uh, it, its length can be anything and its height can be anything. Typically we say it should be five feet by six feet. That means six feet long and five feet tall. Then we also do raised bed farming for those people, uh, those uh, people living in the cities who have got farmhouses, but their farmhouses have just been lying idle. So we do raised bed farming. Uh, so these are some pictures of raised bed farming. Uh, lastly, I would just like to uh, mention that these are the various target customer segments. So we divide the market into two parts, retail and institutional. So in the retail uh, domain, we have people with rooftops, people with kitchen garden, people with balconies. And in the institutional uh, domain, we have uh, we have schools who are uh, who are doing school farming program with us. Uh, we have offices who are setting up uh, rooftop uh, farms as a stress busting exercise. And then there are a few malls who are now uh, getting interested in creating organic farms on the rooftop so that they can attract more and more people because the malls have been most uh, drastically affected by the pandemic because they, they were closed for the longest period of time. So just quickly a few pictures about green walls that we do. Uh, these are all uh, pictures of, of a project. Uh, and then we have this concept of living billboard. This is something extremely new. So these are not just living billboards. These are living, breathing and air purifying billboards. So we are taking this idea to, to uh, smart city mission and telling them that you must remove all the billboards and replace them with these kind of living billboards because they can also act as air purifiers. So this is about living billboards. I talked about uh, city business partner. I'll be happy to connect with anybody who would like to uh, collaborate with us. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for sharing the entire journey at the same time the, with living examples, the kind of models we have. So with this, we welcome our next speaker. Uh, Sakish, sir, can you hear us? Uh, yes, sir. I can hear you. Yes. Yes, sir. We welcome uh, Mr. Sai Krishna, uh, co-founder of Homecraft. Mr. Sai Krishna has come with an engineering background with the electrical and electronics engineer from VIT and followed by a, a master's in New York State University. He's worked as a contract manufacturer and worked with a corporate like ITC. The first few, few years he's been into the home crop. Home crop with the aim of making cities self-sustainable. They're working with uh, multiple offerings, including their bags, 
their uh, maintaining solutions. Sir, over to you, sir, please. Hello, uh, I think yes, I'm sir. audible. I think I'm audible, right? You are audible, sir. Yes, sir. Little, you can keep mic little closer if possible. Um, hello, sir. Uh, am I audible, Perfect. right? Fine, fine. Perfect, sir. Please carry on. Okay. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, this is Sai Krishna, uh, co-founder of Home Crop. Well, actually, um, Home Crop is a startup which was started in 2015 so it's around five six years old startup with a mission of you know setting up uh, edible gardens at the rooftops or available spaces in the urban areas well uh, why we are saying you know uh, edible garden uh, we have focused more towards you know uh, people setting up their own um, vegetable garden like you know any growing their own leafy greens or growing their vegetables or small uh, you know fruit plants like you know strawberry or uh, you know cucumbers or something like that well, uh, coming to uh, urban farming, uh, already uh, what exactly is urban farming, everybody knows and everybody is aware and Pratik sir also has given, you know, brief about what exactly is like, you know, uh, present uh, position of urban farming and uh, what are the challenges, uh, the, you know, the clientele or the customers who are willing to go into urban farming are facing. Well, I would not, you know, uh, you know, reiterate on the same lines. Um, well, exactly, if I have to just sum up, uh, I'll just uh, share my screen once. Uh, Yura, sir, uh, can you just help me how to share, share the screen? Yes, sir. You can see the video button here in the bottom right, sir. Okay. Next to that, there is a button called share. Yes. Okay. Click on that. Uh, it's. Okay, allow Webex to share your content. Grant access one second, sir. You're operating from MacBook, sir? I'm operating from MacBook. That's the reason that I'm slightly facing some. Okay. okay, okay. Then you share an entire screen, sir. Don't share an application. If you share an application from MacBook, sometimes it will not allow. When you click on a share, you need to click on it, sir. What are the options you are getting? One second, sir. When I am saying share open system uh, preferences, then it says yes, security sir. and privacy. Uh, privacy on privacy, yes, I have accepted uh, Cisco Web Webex events. Yes, okay. sir. Then or else you can send me in WhatsApp or mail, sir. Immediately we'll share. Meanwhile, you take up one or two questions with Pratik, Pratik Tiwari, sir. Uh, Meanwhile, uh, Pratik, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, see, uh, first and foremost important question for you might be uh, about uh, whether it is you are maintaining a natural or organic foods when you are dealing with the home crop, sir. Sorry, house related, uh, urban related uh, things, sir. Can you please elaborate on that, sir? Uh, sir, could you uh, could you repeat your question, please? Please, please, definitely, sir. See, many of them are asking. So, are you using any chemicals? Are you using any chemicals? Are you suggesting because how to control pests? To control the pests, you need to use some mechanism. So, what kind of a mechanism you are doing and how you are guiding your users? Right. So, um, so I'll tell you how we are controlling the pests and diseases. I talked about uh, those uh, seven uh, foliar sprays. And uh, if you had observed each uh, bottle, we had put the name of the day. So, there is a Monday bottle, there's a Tuesday bottle, there's a Wednesday bottle. So, Monday to Sunday, there are seven sprays that have to be done by the customer on a daily basis. Now, what is inside these sprays? So let me let me give you the real life uh, scenario. So in Monday bottle, for example, there is Bavaria basiana. Now Bavaria basiana is a liquid fungus which infects the skin of the pest. So it is basically working on contact. So it infects the skin of the pest, but kills the pest, kills the infected pest in about 72 hours. Now, why is it why is it very effective? Because during those 72 hours, 
the infected pest is going to because insects are living in colonies that infected insect is going to go and infects millions of other uh, insects so by the time that insect dies it has already spread that skin skin infection to other insects so that is the monday spray now in tuesday we are using neem oil so there is a huge misconception that neem oil is a bio pesticide neem oil is not a bio pesticide basically how neem oil works is that when the neem oil is sticking to the surface of a leaf and the insect is eating that that leaf and the neem oil is going inside the digestive system of the insect that neem oil is going to do two things one is it has got an antifeedant effect that means it will force the insect to stop eating and the second is it is called an ovipositor what it means is that it will completely eliminate the egg laying property of the insect that means the insect cannot lay eggs now the third thing the wednesday spray is called dashaparni arc now dashaparni arc has been made it's a vedic formulation which is made by fermenting 10 different herbal leaves in cow urine now as you can see from uh, as you can see monday is a contact uh, killer uh, which is basically infecting the skin uh, tuesday is neem oil which is basically stopping the insect to lay eggs and wednesday uh has got these uh, extract of 10 different herbal leaves which causes a lot of skin irritation so when we are creating a pest control strategy it should not be restricted to only one thought that we have to kill the pest please remember that pests uh, it is not necessary to kill the pest it is more important to control their uh, their population and it is equally important to create an environment where the pest are are feeling very uncomfortable so when we do the wednesday spray and when it falls on the skin of the pest then it causes a lot of irritation because it has also got green chilies so that is how we are controlling pest now the pest control is not only uh, happening above the ground it is also happening below the ground so that is the reason why we have root application and i'll be happy to share greater details with any one of you who would like to learn more about this sure sir sure sir uh, uh sai krishna sir uh yes sir yes sir you can start sir uh well uh, sorry uh, people uh, i am unable to just share my screen but still you know based yes, on sir. what i i can i can i'll just uh, briefly run please, through please sir next okay. 10 minutes you can take sir please yeah yes uh, i would like to uh, finish it as <laughs> as quickly as possible uh, well you know see uh, i will just continue from where i stopped well uh, pratik sir has answered a very nice question actually well it's a common question which uh, any uh, you know um, urban farmer or you know passionate uh, garden uh, grower would uh, love to un- understand uh, thank you pratik sir actually you have answered one of my question also where i felt you know people might ask me well coming to uh, now urban farming uh, they say generally you know uh, on urban farming uh, any vegetable uh, roughly tra- you know uh, you know moves around you know 150 to uh, 300 kilometers to reach your table so this is quite a long distance so uh, now uh, when it comes to uh, uh, urban farming uh, this as a concept has started very recently at least in india when this is a concept which which is which was prevailing you know in uh, in elsewhere you know different places from a very long time now when it comes to india uh, at least you know uh, uh, there are several startups which have just they are around you know 5 to 6 years old like one uh, like home crop is one among them now uh, why urban farming is like you know uh, urban population uh, as as in if you see it's increasing now around roughly around 30 to 35% of in, uh, you know indian population uh you know are staying in cities well uh, city population uh, uh, do not have you know access to clean food or i can say you know uh, or they have less control over their supply chain of you know uh, food food in sense you know uh, when it comes to like you know post uh, covid uh, now food uh, is no longer uh, you know as a simple term it is being used as you know healthy food clean food whereas healthy food and clean food is like you know many people turn towards you know eating a lot of vegetables and fruits and uh, you know get uh, you know bringing down their you know cereals and you know and uh, you know other uh, grain uh, uh, intake 
so as such if you see uh, uh, post covid people uh, uh, wanted to have uh, an experience of growing their own vegetables uh, in their available spaces like you know if you see uh, urban farming one of the biggest challenges available of space and uh, you know uh, sunlight as such if you see uh, uh, now uh, post covid uh, we as a company also have received you know a uh, lots of calls during covid uh, and post covid also like you know people uh, who were stuck in their homes so they wanted to grow their own uh, vegetables and greens uh, in and greens in the available you know spaces uh, so uh, we just uh, uh, took many calls uh, we started uh, giving training sessions to many people uh, post uh, covid uh, where people who were uh, enthusiastic uh, towards uh, growing their own veggies uh, in that uh, sense only uh, now what we have done is uh, we started in uh, i'll just give you briefly about our journey we started in uh, roughly around you know 2016 you know the ideation started and uh, formally the company started from 2017 Initially, we were setting up uh, uh, vegetable gardens uh, to all the clientele who were uh, like, you know, were interested. Uh, once we started uh, installing their uh, kits, uh, like, you know, uh, maybe, you know, uh, 60 square feet, 100 square feet of their requirement of uh, vegetables, whatever, leafy greens or greens. Uh, we gave them initial training to them. Uh, we asked them to follow certain steps and all those things. Uh, but later we realized, you know, it has to be a... Uh, you know, it was a challenging task for people to understand, you know, okay, when, when a pest comes, you know, what, how to check for a pest, what kind of pests are there, uh, uh, and, you know, what has to be sprayed or what has to be applied to control the pest uh, before uh, they coming and attacking your vegetable garden. So, uh, uh, we have uh, taken down many questions and, you know, many queries from clientele. And then, uh, from then, we started moving towards, you know, a product-based, uh, simplified uh, solution to urban gardeners. So, uh, we have installed close to more than, you know, 1,500, uh, you know, houses, uh, several sizes of kits, or, you know, uh, rooftop gardens, or, you know, balcony gardens. And now, uh, they have their gardens running. So, uh, to run their gardens, you know, any plant generally requires, you know, three basic things. We know one is the sunlight, you know, water. Apart from that, it requires uh, proper nutrition and as well as a pest care. So, for a nutrition, well, you know, uh, the organic means or, you know, the best means which uh, presently we have is using a good quality compost. Uh, supplemented with, you know, some, you know, biofertilizers, biofertilizers where in which it will do the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, it will uh, suffix, uh, you know, suffix with uh, you know, nitrogen bacteria, you know, phosphorus bacteria or potassium bacteria, wherein will, uh, from the vermi compost or, you know, the compost or the potting mix, these bacteria help in, you know, aiding the increase of, you know, nutrient uptake by the plant. As well as, you know, you have uh, several, you know, micro uh, uh, elements which are required, like, you know, uh, all other elements that can be supplemented with the, the natural uh, form of uh, all this uh, oils or uh, you have your uh, 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 castings of uh, chicken or you know castings of you know sheep so these will help in aiding the guard you know the nutrient uptake of the guard so to help people you know uh, people uh, started you know understanding more of it from their google search or you know whatever it is so to make simple thing to make things simple to them what we have done is, uh, so any urban gardener who wants to set up a garden, we have installed their garden, we have given set of instructions. Apart from that, we have given them a manual to understand things. Uh, and if they don't understand the manual, uh, they'll be added into the common WhatsApp group, where in which if they find any difficulty in change in color, and color, color of the leaf or, you know, any uh, unnatural uh, thing on the plant, so they can take a picture and they can share. And uh, based on that, we give a recommendation. So not only that, what we have done is we have done a, we have created a maintenance kits for people, where in which it will have a set of uh, you know three to four uh, items in it. One is like you know it will take care of the nutrition, the macronutrition. Other one will take care of the micronutrition. One of them will take care of the pest, and other one also is slightly pest only, where in which it is slightly given at a slightly bigger concentration. Where in which suppose if, if the client is away from his house and he has not. Uh, checked his uh, pest attack on the plants, he can slightly use a, uh, you know, a better or bigger concentration uh, much frequently to uh, control the, you know, pest increase and all those things. Now, coming to our kits, we have actually uh, three kits, basically. 
uh, one is like you know one kits are like related to the you know, maintenance kits and all those things where in which uh, you know uh, existing gardeners who already are aware of uh, how to uh, you know uh, grow how the nutrition of the plant is take to be taken care and as well as how the pest of the plant has to be taken care at what uh, frequency has the uh, the inputs have to be given during the flowering stage uh, the plant is under stress so what kind of inputs are to be given so for sa such people who are like you know mature gardeners or uh, gardeners who are already aware of uh, about gardening we have a certain kits now leaving that aside for a beginner uh, we have come up uh, with something called as a single plant kit where in which suppose uh, you are uh, located in a uh, urban area where in which you are in a uh, you have only an apartment you have a small balcony where in which you can grow only one or two plants for somebody uh, who wants to grow in that small space also we have come up with a kit where in which uh, we have a leafy green kit and as well as a vegetable kit the kit will have entirely all the things so it will have a you know one of our special uh, specialized thing is like you know product is uh, we have a fabric grow bag fabric grow bag in sense it is not made from plastic basically it's a geotextile fabric grow bag it is made from a recycled fabric uh, well uh, we are uh, you know the biggest seller of those bags uh, across you know at least on uh, two three platforms as well as you know uh, offline also leaving that aside these grow bags have uh, one of the greatest feature uh, they have air pruning where in which you know the roots are not encircled so the pruning happens and the root, root growth is far better than the regular you know your hdb bags or your plastic pots so we give that uh, bag in that uh, kit we give the seeds we give a potting mix uh, we give the nutrients we give uh, uh, all other uh, supplementary needs of the plant water are requ required we give it in both solid medium and liquid medium uh, in the solid medium, what we have done is we have come up with a concept of uh, water soluble pouch. We keep keep the you know uh, the nutrient in a tea bag kind of a so water soluble pouch. Uh, they can just uh, take that bag pouch, just put it into their you know sprayer, uh, just uh, add water and you know shake it and you know it becomes dissolved and you know the nutrition goes into that water and they can spray. So it's a simple thing. It it's it, it is generally done you know, you know on a weekly basis. So one pouch is sufficient for a week's uh, nutrition or whatever it is. That is one thing. So this kit is like, you know, it is like, you know, I can say you, I will not use the word uh, great, successful, but people who have uh, used this or have understood this, uh, they have really complimented us on, you know, okay, enabling them to grow at least one tomato or one chili or one brinjal or whatever it is, a single plant uh, uh, system. Uh, well, uh, for a small space, whatever they could afford or whatever they could, you know, do it, they were able to do that. And coming to our other kits, like we have something called as micro green kits, which is common across, of course, many people already, uh, you know, many companies are also doing this. Uh, our specialized uh, thing on micro greens is we have recently tied up, I mean, recently, uh, last year we have tied up with uh, one of the foundation, GMR foundation. So what they have done is uh, we have done a project called as baby leaves, project baby leaves. It revolves around, you know, uh, well, you know, a pregnant woman uh, like from a completely ru rural area but very closely connected to the city uh, so uh, they need a lot of nutrition at a very uh, affordable price so what we have done is we have designed uh, microgreen kits for them where in which uh, they'll be having the regular you know fenugreek uh, seeds at, with them or you know they'll be having uh, uh, coriander seeds with them so all uh, and some spinach seeds were given to them which is at an affordable cost so we have made them, you know, uh, grow their own uh, microgreens, which they can use it in the daily food so that, you know, it helps the baby and as well as the pregnant woman with water nutrition. So we have done it for around 40, 50 villages. So uh, it was, you know, completely appreciated by the local governments and all those things. And, uh, you know, it is in a process of, you know, expansion to a, a larger level. Now coming to other things, uh, we have something called a school crop also, which is an extension or arm of home crop. Uh, uh, two years ago, that's like, you know, before COVID, uh, we have done it at six schools as, as a hobby uh, club, where in which uh, we have given these same kids to children. They were able to grow their own. Uh, it was like a hobby club, one among like, you know, you have your music and your dance. So uh, gardening was given as a hobby club. So uh, it was a 14 to 16 week program, where in which uh, uh, the entire uh, cycle of a plant was explained and you know uh, we have explained you know about the nutrition of the plant you know from uh, from plant nutrition we have connected to all other subjects like you know math uh, science so it's a stem extension wherein with science technology and engineering 
all all those things were applied uh, in their garden setup and uh, we have given them we have spoken about you know uh, why sankranti or some festivals are celebrated which are closely uh, closely associated with you know agriculture and all those farming things and uh, and students you know after this gardening program they have given uh, you know uh, great insights telling you know we really understand now you know uh, tomato as such in the beginning of the class when we were speaking about you know where do you get tomato how do you get tomato people uh, or children were you know answering you know you get it from your mandi or your supermarket or your your nearest uh, raitu bazar whatever it is which is a local name of uh, you know mandi here so people were not aware that you know a tomato takes close to 4 to 5 months uh, for it to come onto the plant onto the plate so uh, students started you know understanding you know that food food uh, as an item has to be you know given a, a great uh, significance where in which it should not be wasted uh, because you know yeah, to grow a tomato uh, it takes uh, 120 days to 130 days it's a long time so it's not so easy and it it, it travels a lot of uh, uh, you know distance to reach your uh, place so it is uh, a fuel uh, and you know other expenses that are added so you have to save every uh, you know item what you have uh, so this is all about you know your home crop uh, uh, we have our website homecrop.in uh, people get can 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 connect with us and uh, uh, yuvraj sir has our uh, contact details uh, you can just uh, connect to us uh, so we have some uh, you know interesting things to talk to people uh, thank, thank you thank sir you so much thank you so much thank you very much for sharing there are pertinent questions from our speakers our boss, sorry our, our attendees today i'll be the, the question would be same probably for both of you would go in the same order first will be talk about this by pratik sir followed by sai sir okay. first and foremost important question if anybody they want to get it from various locations, how do they get it? Let's say somebody from Northeast, somebody from uh, here. The first question as a user. Second, do you have any kind of a local entrepreneur or a franchisee model where they can resell or they can set up a uh, supporting system? Please, sir, please address these two questions. So, firstly, uh, we have a D2C model, a direct to cons uh, customer model in which we send across the product directly to the customer's house. It is home delivered. And using a self-installation video, the customer can uh, can install the, all the products themselves. That is one thing. The second thing is that we we have a city business partner uh, model, which is not really a franchisee model, but uh, it's it's a lot less asset heavy as compared to the franchisee model. It's it's a lot less costly, lot a uh, lot less investment required to become a city business partner. So any young entrepreneur can become a city business partner with very little investment. I would encourage you to uh, directly get in touch with me through WhatsApp and I'd be happy to share that uh, the details of that model with all of you. There are many people asking for the contact details. Uh, both the speakers contact details will be shared through mail, their mail ID as well as the contact number if they, they agree to that. You can approach them for uh, further collaborations or opportunities or directly as a buyer, uh, you can take that information. Sai, sir, please. Uh, well, coming to uh, our model, uh, well, we are not into any franchising as of now. Uh, okay. What we do is uh, if any customer uh, calls our support number or our, you know, uh, uh, numbers or emails us, um, we assist them, you know, through their, uh, you know, they can purchase it, whatever. I mean, we understand their requirement first, basically. If it is somewhere close to us, we send our technical person to go visit them, give them briefly all the information. And uh, then whatever is the requirement, we, we fulfill that. That is something which is in vicinity, maybe around, you know, 100, 150 kilometers or whatever it is. When it comes to elsewhere, uh, already uh, uh, through our website and through Amazon and Flipkart, we deliver all our products uh, every month when we see our uh, delivery uh, you know states we uh, we cover almost you know all the states and you know, all the places all major cities of india so any requirement they can place an order and that will be delivered in you know uh, 3 to 4 working days to their places once it is delivered we also have uh, something called as on all our kits there are qr codes installed there uh, printed there if they just uh, you know scan those qr codes Every requirement, every understanding, every question and answer, every solution needed for uh, their problem that they will be facing about the plant and all those things are uh, given on that uh, QR code. If they have not, uh, you know, uh, completely, you know, satisfied with any of those information, they can personally call us or they can just mail us. We will, we will support them on that. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. 
uh, there is a concern raised by one particular doctor is is it necessary to use uh, the, some kind of a spray every day sir uh, can you please elaborate that even though it is organic uh, so is it necessary or is it only on a need basis can you please explain that sir yes uh, sir i uh, in fact uh, uh, directly responded to uh, that gentleman's question and uh, what i have told him is that uh, uh, firstly uh, all these um, uh, organic sprays are definitely and 100% organic they are perfectly uh, safe for use uh, for human consumption that means you can spray them on the vegetable and the reason why we want these to be sprayed on a daily basis is because in case of organic farming we don't have any uh, farm, we don't have any toxic chemicals with which to kill the pest so we have to naturally affect and control the insect population by using these very very subtle and very very mild organic uh, sprays and i have also mentioned to the gentleman that uh, he can check on the internet uh, whether using Bavaria basiana, neem oil and dashpani earth, whether these three things are safe uh, to be used on vegetables for human consumption. So that would further reduce his apprehension when he will directly read from the internet. Okay, thank you sir, thank you very much. One more question is the cost of setting up. So how much is the cost and place, whatever they are looking for? So basic cash, they need to invest uh, to take up your particular product, sir. Both can, both of you can answer one by one. Pratik Tiwari, sir, followed by Sai Krishna, sir. Uh, so uh, we have a product catalog in which we have uh, not only mentioned the rates, but we have also mentioned the technical specifications and the details of the components that you get in each of the products. So my request is that I have shared my WhatsApp number. If you are interested, please connect with me by WhatsApp and I'll immediately share that product catalog with you. Sai Krishna, sir. Um, well, sir, uh, we also uh, go with uh, a logic of, you know, uh, customers' requirements are to be met. Uh, so the pricing is like, you know, depends upon what kind of uh, setup the customer is really looking forward for. So leaving that aside, uh, I have told you that we have a single uh, plant, uh, you know, kit also. So our single plant kit uh, can be directly purchased from our website. Uh, so whatever plant you want, you'll be, the prices are all available on the website. Uh, and coming up with something else like, you know, you want to set up a garden that, that depends upon, you know, what is the size of the garden and uh, where exactly you want, how you want. So all those things will matter about the pricing, but whereas a single plant, yes, single plant kit, you can take it from our uh, website. The pricing is directly given there. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. So you may share the catalog with us also, sir. We'll send them a mail, whoever is come here so that it will help them. We need not separately uh, talk about that. So one more thing is, sir. So when you were talking about urban farming, is it only for self sustainability or they can commercialize it also? That's the first question. If the second question, if the, fall, if the answer is such a business opportunity, are you helping them in a market linkages? Please, sir. Uh, so uh, now more and more people are, are uh, exploring the possibility of commercially growing uh, organic vegetables on large rooftops like uh, rooftops of schools, hospitals. And uh, even some some uh, smart city uh, smart cities are also interested in utilizing the large rooftops of these buildings. Uh, so definitely, it is commercially a very very viable and a very attractive proposition. As far as market linkages are concerned, uh, marketing uh, an organic farm which is located in the heart of the city is not going to be a very difficult uh, proposition. Although we ourselves do not offer any market linkages because the, the market dynamics of each city could be very different. But we'll be happy to handhold such entrepreneurs and create a customized marketing strategy for each one of them for their specific city. But uh, commercially, it's a very viable proposition. Sir, please. Uh, well, sir, when it uh, when we talk about you know commercialization, uh, well, I can just give you a small example. Sky Greens, uh, there's a company from Singapore. Uh, 
what they have done is you know in a, in a uh, in a area uh, they grow close to uh, you know uh, the one ton of vegetables is what i have read long back uh, they grow leafy greens in a vertical farms and they supply to uh, the local supermarkets uh, well that is a very good uh, you know uh, commercial model because uh, urbanites uh, uh, really need uh, fresh uh, vegetables or leafy greens which are clean like you know uh, pesticide or you know you know chemical residue free uh, and as such if you see uh, unused spaces uh, if they can be converted into vertical farms where in which uh, the delivery times and as well as you know the distances are uh, less and the freshness uh, is maintained that's a very good model but when it comes to home crop as such yes um, we do not have any uh, linkages with uh, market uh, or marketing of their uh, products but we can certainly support them you know if they want to establish any uh, you know commercial farm we can certainly help them out you know in setting up a commercial farm we ourselves uh, have uh, you know two of them uh, two farms uh, which we uh, grow uh, to just to show it as a demo to people who are like you know willing to uh, have a you know uh, not as a commercial one but as a larger uh, rooftop gardens okay thank you Thank you. So the last few minutes, we'll open directly to our uh, attendees so that they can talk. Anybody would like to interact with us because we request you to raise your hand so that uh, we can unmute and we can ask them to talk. Probably we'll uh, talk with uh, Mr. Suyo Kulkarni. Sheshan, can you unmute Suyo Kulkarni? Done. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, uh, thank you, Yura, sir. Uh, my question would be, uh, uh, this is Suyo Kulkani from uh, Khetada. Uh, we are in incubator at the manage. Uh, the thing is, uh, how did you get uh, the first traction with the customers? Because all said and done that the innovations and uh, the product lines and uh, the awareness is much more uh, appreciated. But the first traction is extremely important from uh, a startup point of view and the uh, end uh, user point of view. Uh, can I answer that uh, question? Both can answer, sir. It is relevant to the both. Pratik, okay. sir, followed by him, you can answer, sir. Okay. Uh, firstly, uh, hi, Suyog. Uh, I am absolutely thrilled and overjoyed to connect back with you. Uh, I remember spending the early days of our uh, training together. Uh, it's, I'm feeling very happy to reconnect with you. Uh, Suyog, as far as traction, customer traction is concerned, uh, there is actually no, no great science behind it. During our nine years of experience, we have realized only one thing that uh, you just need to be slow and while being slow, you should be creating uh, happy customers. So there is no better method of creating uh, customer traction than uh, having and creating uh, happy customers. So what it simply means is uh, uh, start with lesser number of customers, put your heart, body and soul into it, make them the happiest people on this on this planet. And then also very intelligently, you must uh, give them an opportunity to share their happiness on a platform with which actually belongs to you. So basically, uh, maybe sharing their, their photographs on your Facebook page, sharing their videos on your YouTube channel, uh, sharing their uh, testimonials on your website. So if happy customers are, are able to express their happiness on your platform, uh, people will definitely come to know about it. And then you don't have to uh, spend any money in, in doing conventional marketing and advertising. So I, I hope I've tried to answer this, but I'll be very happy to connect with you one-on-one -on -one and share more about my experiences. Thank you, sir. Sai Krishna, sir, please. Well, uh, hi, Suyog. Uh, well, uh, we will tell you about our own experience. Um, see, uh, founders or co-founders uh, with a lot of enthusiasm, with a lot of expectations, uh, come up with some idea uh, they start their startup. Uh, now, coming to urban farming, uh, you know, startup. Well, uh, this is like, you know, when we started, we were present ourselves, we made ourselves present in almost all the horticultural related expos, agri related expos, any events in agricultural universities, 
so we made ourselves present there we started talking to people we said we will be setting up our garden to be very precise with you first five gardens i remember uh, i think you know uh, uh, we have almost uh, made it you know a very negligible cost because uh, acquiring the first customer is really 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 important and it is uh, very difficult so we have uh, spoken and you know we when we uh, we have done their installations to them uh, we were present almost every alternate day uh, ourselves there we were talking to people uh, we were uh, trying to see the garden very closely we were making them also you know taking their uh, of course they were all in their busy schedules so we would take their time morning uh, you know 20 minutes or afternoon or evening whenever they were available so initial first five uh, customers yes we have done it at very 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 low pricing and you know uh, we 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 saw that you know they really enjoy the experience of that gardening once that was done they themselves have referred it, uh, you know our company to you know several of their friends so it went as you know it passed on and after that you know when we were present ourselves with almost all the hot expos and agriculture expos uh, we started getting calls and once you know the website was developed and you know when we had our own you know instagram you know, long back it was facebook uh, and people started sharing their photos and images then you know you uh, you know we started uh, doing some you know uh, google uh, advertisement uh, so when some keywords related to gardening or anything else was you know searched upon so uh, they were directed to our website so all these things you know help but it took some time you know because this as a passion uh, is only a beginning well it is not a compulsion to every individual so if some uh, understanding about gardening or requirement of gardening uh, to every individual is not a common practice so uh, so we we began that way so uh, i'm happy to share anything else if you want me to you can connect to me directly thank you thank you thank you very much sir uh, the detail of the capacity of thank time you, thank you thank you sir we'll be sharing with everyone the contact details of the both the speakers their mail ids their company uh, accounts you can even connect through us also thank you very much sir thank you for being here I'd like to thank both of you wholeheartedly for covering in detail and, uh, and uh, generated so much of interest from our uh, thing. You showed that passion beats everything. Thank you, sir. Uh, with this, on this note, we'd like to thank our director. Uh, uh, you've read, sir. Can I just yes, please. can I just sign off with a very small little message for all the entrepreneurs please, who are please, participating sir, please, here? Please. Uh, friends, I just want to share this message, which is coming straight from my heart. Uh, if you truly believe in something, no matter what happens, just keep pushing for it. I can assure you one thing, and this has happened to me many times, that when you don't give up, the universe helps you to go ahead. So never give up on your dreams, no matter how hard the going goes. Wishing you all a lots of uh, lots of best of luck for uh, all your future assignments. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So we'd like to thank uh... Thank you, all our attendees also today, all our, our director, sir, agriculture director, agriculture sir, and sir, and the entire team. So last but not the least, all our attendees, uh, despite uh, Saturday, second Saturday, all day, so many people are here, close to more than 200 people. Thank you very much. Have a great uh, time ahead. Uh, make sure uh, you are safe and you keep your family also safe. Thank you. Take care. And see you in the coming webinar, uh, Saturday webinar series at 11 a.m. Thank you, Rasa. Thank you, Manish team. Thank you, Pratik, sir. Thank you.